obviously a, a terrific game, a terrific win for our team against a terrific Purdue team. Um, you know, I just can't say enough about these two guys to my right and also the other guys in the locker room, just the the determination, the the depth that we had to play with because of fouls, how guys stepped up and helped each other out, the, the execution out of timeouts, and, and at the end, the defensive play Chucky made there at the end to get a charge. Um, you know, I, I can go down the list. Um, just a terrific uh, March game and uh, excited to – you know, watch these guys mature and grow and get better as the season's going on. And and um, they're playing their best basketball right now, which is where you want to be. So um, excited to and we'll enjoy this one for a couple hours and then get ready for tomorrow's championship game. Questions for Chucky and Max. We'll start on the right. Jeff? Yeah, Chucky and then Max, if you guys can take us through the last sequence. Chucky, you drawing the charge, and Max, what you were hoping to get um, before you took that shot up. Chucky. Uh, yeah, uh, I was just trying to force a turnover, and um, I knew Braden Smith had gotten into me a little bit, so I was able to, uh, to sell the, the charge. You know, it definitely extended, and, you know, they caught it. Max? Um, yeah, really just trying to get something at the front of the rim. Uh, you know, Chucky drew, drove into the, the lane. Uh, he draws a lot of attention, so his ability to just see the floor, kick it out to me, and then continue to try to put pressure on the rim, just got to... Good look at the end, and it went in, so. We'll go to the second row in the middle. Yeah, when you're in a game like that and, and the fouls aren't going your way, you're not getting a lot of whistles, and it feels like every other possession, they're getting the whistles. You know, how do you keep your head, and, and how do you just stay strong in the game mentally? Chucky. Uh, move on to the next play. That's, you got to have that mentality to, to win in March. You know, you can't keep crying about the one play. That's in the past, you gotta move on, and that's how you're gonna win in March. Second row in the middle, Tom. Uh, Max, uh, you guys had some struggles in February, kind of closing out games, and you know, now you've you know, had that happen on the good side here the last few. Uh, what was your confidence level like trying to get through that, and, and where do you guys stand now with uh, just sort of where your confidence level is in closing out games? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think our just our confidence is coming from the chemistry that we've all built, this bond that we've built in the locker room. It's carrying it outside onto the floor now. And, you know, our ability to learn during that stretch in late February, early March, um, and not dwell on it, look at, look at it as a burden. So um, just coming into work every day, everybody's super positive, ready to go, ready to learn. Um, and I think that's just starting to show now on the floor. But there's not a better group of guys I'd want to be around. I'm just... I've really never been this far in March in my career, so I just want to keep playing with the dudes we got in this locker room. It's been a lot of fun. Come back to the front row on the left. Uh, Chuck, Chucky, you obviously put in a lot of work to your finishing over the offseason, I guess. You know, can, can you describe that sort of final sequence that's the end, and the regulation and, you know, I guess what sort of the work that went into, you know, I guess being able to make shots like that? Yeah, um, I appreciate the coaching staff for helping me uh, get my rhythm back. You know, during the season, you know, I struggled a lot. And, you know, around one of the, um, around like the early February uh, start, you know, they, that's when they really stepped in. You know, I was able to get my touch back, you know, able to find my feel for the game again. And um, just the, the, work, the work I kept doing, you know, uh, they, they helped me with that. So, you know, I give credit to them. And, you know, I also give credit to myself because I, I, work, I work for this. So I, I do deserve this spot. Far right side, front row. Also for Chucky on the, that last basket in regulation, um, can you walk us through that? Was that the first option? Was a three the first option, and you saw that you needed to drive it? Just walk us through that. Yeah, the three was the first option, but I had seen that Braden um, uh, was a little too close to me, so I, I knew I had that angle on him, and I was able to get to the rim, and I knew they didn't want to foul, so, um, you know, he just stepped out the way. I was able to convert. Second row, left-hand side. For either one of you guys, uh, you lost two really tight ones to Purdue during the regular season. How good does it feel to, you know, get the win this time around? Max. You know, it feels good uh, to end up on the other side of this one. But like I said before, just our ability to learn from it, uh, take the experience that we've had in the regular season and apply it during games. Uh, it's been really it's been really fun just to know that we have that in our back, back pocket, our ability to learn on the fly, pick th different things up in the scout um, in preparation and things like that. It's been it's been fun just to see our growth kind of throughout the whole season and our maturity kind of, you know, come out uh, as we've kept playing. 
Let's take one or two more for the student athletes. If anybody, we'll go to Amaya in the front row, right. Hi, Maya Flacky with Gopher Hole. You talk about this bond you've built and how it's so much fun to play with this team. Can you just talk about how you've built such a strong bond with this team in particular? I mean, it, I think it just really comes, like you're going to have ups and downs in the season. It's going to be, you know, what, what do you do to make up for that? How are you going to handle yourself when things don't go bad? And then how are you going to handle yourself when things go well? And we just got all 18 dudes in the locker room are even keeled. You know, never want, no one gets too high or too low on themselves. And everybody knows that we got the trust in one another. And like, I think that just shows on the floor with, you know, the best player we got on our team, his ability to just give the ball up and trust someone else in the late game speaks volume it screams you know team not me so i think just having that and building off that it's going to be good for us we'll finish in the front row on the left max you said yesterday about seeing the shot go through the rim i guess seeing that early in the game how much does that help you know on sort of that last shot of the game um i mean yeah it helps to see the first couple go in for sure get your confidence going early um but like i said you know just staying aggressive uh keeping the confidence that you have that you know i know that this coaching staff and the players on my teammates have in me. Um, there's nothing to really fear or be scared about going into a game, you know? You got the utmost confidence, you know, you got everybody's trust. All right, thank you guys. Head back to the locker room. We'll continue with Coach Guard here. If you have a question for Coach Guard, we'll start with Jeff on the far right side. And we'll come to you, Nick. Yeah, Greg, um, the, the play that you did dial up at, that for Chucky on the inbound, is that something you've run before? Yeah. He... Not. In... Seven years, but we've done it before, yeah. You know where, right? And who, yeah. Front row, middle here. Just Nick. haven't been in that position, so. Hey, Greg, Nick Oson, Padre 247. You've been so consistent with us the last couple of weeks, saying this team hasn't flinched, they don't flinch. You know, you lose a couple guys falling out, clearly a couple guys banged up. How was a performance like this just exemplify that in this team? Yeah, I think it speaks volumes. To, for our depth, you know, and I've said that all year that I think our ace in our pocket is our depth. You know, obviously we got different guys, different nights. You know, yesterday it was AJ. Today, Chucky makes big plays. Um, you know, the day before it was John Blackwell. So, you know, we're not specifically one or two people dependent in terms of production. So, and when you have guys either go down or are banged up or we file, have three guys fall out, um, you know, guys like Carter Gilmore that haven't played a lot here recently in the last three weeks come in and their minds are in the right place, you know, and that allows them to perform. If you're sulking and feeling sorry for yourself and why don't I have my minutes, if you have my and me and I in your vocabulary and in your thought process, you're not going to be ready for that position when Steve fouled out. But Gilly has done a good job of being about the team. He always has, and that allows him to come in and, and perform and, you know, when we needed him to. Stay in the front row, left-hand side. Way back in the beginning of the season, after that Marquette win, you talked about belief and just kind of the team believing and being able to win games like this, I guess. Did the team need to refine that with beating opponents like this, going on runs, stringing together wins? I, I think, I mean, you're always trying to um, instill belief in them because they get so many negative shots from the outside world that you you constantly are countering that. And, and we've talked all year, we actually since September, you know, believe, earn, and finish. You know, you have to you have to see it first. You know, you have to dream about it. And and this group has big goals. I've said before, the only one that's gotten away from us so far is the regular season. So, um, and then you got to go do the work, and, and you got to earn it, and you got to finish it. So, um, you know, I think this group has always had strong belief in themselves. Um, you know, but they're 18 to 22 years old. That. Uh, are going through a lot of things sometimes some adversity for the first time and you gotta you know, sometimes you gotta prop them up but at the same time you hold them accountable and and push them through it help them fight through it and then you get to this point in time and hopefully that that maturity and those experiences start to pay off second row in the middle tom Greg, in the ha past handful of years, you've probably had, you guys have probably had more success against Purdue than anyone. Uh, and you kind of saw that right from the get-go today. You guys just don't back down from them and just take it to them as much as you can. Can you just talk about the mentality of that and playing that team and just sort of standing there every minute? Yeah, I don't know if it's a mentality. I mean, we try not to back down from anyone, but I have such great respect for Matt. I mean, I think our... Our programs are very similar uh, in their in the fabric of them and what we believe in and how we go about things. And I think, you know, we do things the right way. I think Matt does things the right way. 
um, in, in terms of how he builds his program, how he recruits. Um, you know, he's a great representation for our league nationally as a coach. Um, you know, and you trace that back to Coach Katie, Coach Bennett, Coach Ryan. You know, th those two programs are built on lunch pail, hard hat mentalities. And, and um, you know, I, I just, you know, it's always an um, honor to compete against them because he's a terrific coach that has really good players. And they make you um, coach better and make our players better because the, the bar is set really high. Second row in the middle. Yeah, Coach, it seems like there's been a tale of two teams throughout this season. And, and during that rough stretch you had in, in late January, February, you talked about sloppiness, turnovers a lot. You know, what do you think is the biggest difference when, when you guys are on versus when you're struggling? Well, the obvious one is I've got all my guys. You know, we're healthy um, and able to use a complete rotation. Um, but I think, you know, every team goes through most part. Maybe UConn hasn't gone through one. Purdue hasn't gone through one. Um, maybe Houston hasn't. Everybody else in the country has gone through some sort of adversity. Maybe it's a three-game streak. Maybe it's a five-game streak. Maybe they had it in December. Maybe they had it in January. You're going to go through it. There's too much parity in college basketball. Um, and if you're not ducking competition, you know, and playing some, some tough non-conference schedules like we do and, and Matt does as well, um, you're, you put your neck out there. You know, you're going to risk this. And then you get in our league, and we know each other so well, and there's great coaches and great players in our league that you, you know, you're going to take some bumps, but you have to not put your head down, as these guys said, and not feel sorry for yourself. You don't let the valleys get too low and don't let the peaks get too high and keep pushing forward, knowing that, you know, there'll be light at the end of the tunnel if you do hit a rough patch. Front row on the left, and then we'll finish with Jeff on the right. How have you seen Max work through the shooting struggles that he's been going through over the last month plus? Yeah, I think you, you focus on other parts of your game. There's a lot of ways you can help a team be successful without necessarily shooting at a high clip. And for him, um, you know, defensively, he's, he's anchored that perimeter spot pretty well and done a good job with that. His leadership, he's done a really good job with that. He's really got a voice in that locker room. Um, his toughness, obviously, and that's combined with his voice and his leadership. So, you know, and you keep pushing, you put time in, you know, and he's in the gym. He's working. You, it's it's a, a tool and a skill you can't let sit idle and let it collect dust. You got to keep, whether you're cooking, uh, shooting the ball, or you're struggling, you still got to put in the work, and he's done that, and as has Chucky. And I think you see guys that, you know, work, hit their way out of it, so to speak, right? And, um, I mean, if you're a golfer and you're shanking the ball, you don't get better by, you know, not going to the range or leaving your clubs in your garage. You gotta, you gotta go work at it, and these guys work at it. All the way on the right, Jeff. Jeff. Greg Tyler did not hit a lot of shots today, but it was clear he wasn't fully healthy. What, what was he able to give you both in terms of tangible on the court, but also maybe sending a message to his teammates like, this is important, and I'm gonna, I'm not healthy, but I'm staying out here. Yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of indecisive if he was going to go or not. I mean, he was, and then he wasn't, and then he was. Um, uh, but I think, you know, for him, too, he got two quick fouls, you know, so he sat. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it just shows the, the toughness of him and the leadership that he was going to battle out there and use all five fouls and, um, you know, continue to scrap, uh, even though he was maybe off – out of sync because of the fouls and he's you know a little banged up but now we got time to continue to you know freshen him back up and you know he didn't play a lot today so that was a blessing in disguise too